Hi, John Goodman here. Hopefully you're watching this video because you are continuing your education about the Colorado Foreclosure Protection Act. This video is about how to write a contract that is consistent with the Colorado Foreclosure Protection Act. Hopefully you've watched the prior video talking about when you need to write a contract that is compliant with the Colorado Foreclosure Protection Act. And I'm not going to recap all of that prior video, but I am going to summarize it lightly. Watch the prior video for the detail, but the concept in the prior video is the Goldilocks concept. There are some deals that are cold enough that you do not need to use the Foreclosure Protection Act version of the Colorado Real Estate Commission contract at all. There are some deals that are in the middle, just right, where you do need to use the Foreclosure Protection Act version of the contract and get to use it. And then there's some deals that are too hot, they're too fraught, they're too complicated, they're too dangerous, and you don't get to write the contract at all. In those transactions, a, an attorney for the seller or an attorney for the buyer needs to write the contract. All right, now to the subject at hand. Suppose you're in the just right zone here, the middle zone, and uh, you are writing the contract to buy and sell. So the concept is the contract has to be special, special. That's not how statutes are written. The word special does not appear in the statute, but the contract has to be a special contract. And the way it's special is intuitive. And that is the concept is, is that we're trying to protect the seller here who is in financial distress or foreclosure. And so the uh, contract needs to give the seller a three-day right to rescind the contract, a three-day right to rescind the contract. And if the seller has a three-day right to rescind the contract, we should also let the seller know that they have a three-day right to rescind the contract. And we should also give the seller a form, a form by which the seller can sign off and deliver notice you know, to the buyer's side within that three-day period that the seller is exercising their right to undo, cancel, rescind the contract. And another way that the contract is special is that while the whole contract does not, does not need to be in the primary language of the seller, the notice to the seller informing the seller that the seller has a three-day right to rescind, at least the key part, the key part of that notice to the seller that they have the three-day right to rescind needs to be in the seller's primary language. All right, that's the overview. That's the intuitive part. How do you accomplish that? What are the details of it? So you go to the Foreclosure Protection Act version of the Real Estate Commission Approved Contract, the provisions addressing the Colorado Foreclosure Protection Act are in Section 11. I am going to start with uh, Section 11.2. 11 11.2 11 uh, makes reference to the homeowner warning notice. And at the time I am recording this video, the home warning, homeowner warning notice has a form number of HWN65-8-10. That dash 10 means that form was developed in 2010. That's when foreclosures were big in response to the Great Recession. So that's when that form uh, was developed. And the, the, uh, this is the notice to the seller informing the seller that the seller has this three-day right to rescind. And there's a portion of that form that needs to be translated into the seller's primary residence, I'm sorry, primary language. It needs to be translated into the seller's primary language uh, and, and, and put in the uh, appropriate box. And that is one of the three attachments to the contract. You're thinking, well, what are the other two attachments to the contract? Well, you look at section 11.1.4 for that. Uh, one of those things is called a notice of cancellation. A notice of cancellation is the form that the seller would use if the seller is choosing to exercise their right to rescind, to cancel the contract. That's the notice that the seller signs and would give back to the buyer's side of the deal, exercising the notice, uh, the notice to the buyer that the seller is rescinding. And then the third form is called a seller warning form. All these forms are on the Division of Real Estate's website. 
uh, you should be able to find them. Let me reiterate something. In section 11.4, there is a reference to a notice of cancellation and seller warning. A notice of cancellation and seller warning. That is not one form with a really long name. That is two forms. One form on, that precedes the and, one form that follows the and. You attach those three things to the contract, filled out correctly, and you have a contract that complies with the Colorado Foreclosure Protection Act. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening this long. Remember my theme, we live in a complicated world. Be careful out there.